Victims of San Antonio priests recall pain, anger, and reckoning. A San Antonio area school board asks one of its own trustees to resign. And Councilman Greg Brockhouse prepares his next big move. This is your Express Briefing podcast for Monday, February 4th. Subscribe to this and other free content at expressnews.com slash podcasts. And get each day's top news and sports headlines delivered to your inbox at expressnews.com slash newsletters. Following the Archdiocese of San Antonio's Thursday release of a report identifying priests credibly accused of sexual abuse since 1941, the San Antonio Express News has spoken with many victims who don't want their names published, noting the stigma they felt, problems with family members, guilt, anger, and how their experiences with a priest affected their faith. Only a few of those named in the report were ever charged or went to prison, and some are long dead. While Texas removed the statute of limitations for the most serious crimes against children in 2007, Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez says that realistically, anything that occurred prior to September of 1987 probably cannot be prosecuted because it's just too old of an offense. To compile the report, the Archdiocese defined sexual abuse of a minor using Texas laws against human trafficking, sexual assault, indecency with a child, and other related offenses. Its own review board examined records of allegations dating to 1940, in some cases consulting with outside professionals to see if there was reason to believe the allegation was true. In the end, it identified the highest number of credibly accused priests among Texas's diocese, which together named nearly 300 in a simultaneous statewide accounting. While some San Antonio area victims' stories are still being reported and investigated, the Archdiocese has declined to say how many new accusations it has received since releasing the information on Thursday. You can find the report in its entirety at expressnews.com slash clergy. The Lay Commission on Clergy Sexual Abuse has also issued a separate report on the Archdiocese procedures for handling abuse complaints. That's available online at expressnews.com slash lay commission. The Board of Trustees of Shirts Cibolo Universal City Independent School District have voted to censure trustee Gary Inman for the second time in less than a year and asked him to resign days after he pleaded guilty to two felony charges. In a resolution approved 6-0, to zero, Saturday trustees said that censure is the only option available to the board and requested his immediate resignation. However, Inman abstained from voting and did not resign noting as he left the building after the special meeting that he'll give the matter some thought and follow up with the board. Last week, Inman said that his actions were solely personal in nature and were not related to SCUCISD or the Board of Trustees. While trustees vehemently disagreed with that claim during Saturday's meeting, they also noted that legally they weren't able to take action to remove him. Inman is an attorney, and admitted Wednesday to misapplying fiduciary property and to committing aggravated perjury relating to acting as the executor for the estate of a 91-year-old woman whose assets were valued at more than $130,000. She died in shirts in 2016, but her beneficiaries say they never received the proceeds. As part of the plea agreement, Inman is required to pay $120,000 in restitution and Wednesday made a $60,000 payment toward that amount. Inman was elected in 2000 and is the board's longest-serving member. He was previously arrested and charged with assaulting his adult stepson during an altercation in late 2017, followed by a June 2018 board vote to censure him. If Inman refuses to resign after his now second censure by the board, Members say they'll seek to limit his ability to represent the district publicly. 
And Saturday, Councilman Greg Brockhouse will host a West Side gathering at Del Bravo Record Shop, where he is expected to use the occasion to officially launch his campaign for mayor in a move that will mark only the second time in the past 20 years a member of the city council has challenged a city mayor. San Antonio Express News Metro columnist Gilbert Garcia writes that Brockhouse has gained a following of disaffected conservatives, seeking someone to put the brakes on City Hall action dedicated to equity funding, mandated paid sick leave, and ambitious climate change initiatives. And that as the freshman councilman approaches his big announcement, he's also making an unmistakable pivot by calling on his obstinate allies in the San Antonio Professional Firefighters Association to return to the bargaining table after four years of stonewalling. Garcia writes that while Mayor Nierenberg will carry into the election a strong portfolio of effort on transportation, housing, environmental policy, and other issues, he'll only be able to call on a limited record of concrete achievements. In the meantime, over the weekend, Greg Brockhouse's previous runoff challenger took advantage of his trajectory by formally launching a renewed District 6 council campaign, meaning Brockhouse will now face a challenge in either a mayoral bid or a re-election campaign. And that's your daily San Antonio Express briefing for Monday, February 4th. Subscribe to this and other free content at expressnews.com slash podcasts.